Hey there guys, this is Red Chaos One and I am back from watching Marvel's Eternals. So I watched Marvel's Eternals as it was coming out. Like the rest of you, I am not an official official big reviewer that Marvel and Disney could invite me. Though, you know, they couldn't afford me. But yeah, I just came back from seeing it. And so I wanna give my thoughts on the movie. Like, these will just be my brief general thoughts. If I'm ever going to go into an in-depth review of it, maybe a couple of weeks from now. But this is just me spitting at the wall. No script, no nothing. Just my general thoughts fresh from coming from seeing the movie. So, the movie is unique. I'll tell you that. It's cinematography is well shot. I have to say it's one of the better shot movies and... Here's, uh, like, this is just me praising the things that I liked about it. The It's one of the better shot movies. It's uh, the use of on-set locations. Like, and, and this isn't to piss on current Marvel movies, but in the old days, back when Peppermint Farm remembers, back during Iron Man 1, Iron Man 2... And Captain America, the first Avenger. Marvel really used a lot of on location shots. And I don't know, the current Marvel movies are just CGI bombastic. They don't use CGI too much, but you can tell that there's a lot of CGI. The use of on, on location sets for this one really helped it feel like those old Marvel movies again, and I, maybe I'm just being nostalgic, but still, it felt good. There was just some great shots, and uh, the action scenes weren't that bad. The action scenes were okay-ish. They weren't that bad, and the story, like, I liked the whole emergence of the Celestial being born from the world, though that leaves some... Uh, Horrible implications for alternate realities that we saw in What If, because that just means all those worlds where Thanos is dead before he can kill half of all life, the Celestials are going to emerge eventually and kill those worlds. So, yeah. But anyway, apart from that, I really enjoyed the concept of the threat of the Celestial thing, and the story was okay ish. The characters were likable enough. Like, I like Gilgamesh, and we'll get back to him in a while. I liked the characters in the story, though. I found Drake or Dra the, the mind control one to be a bit of an annoying asshole. I, I didn't like him that much, but hey, I don't know. But I enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the cinematography. Now, let's get to what I didn't enjoy. Okay, so, I don't think it's naturally the fault of the movie, but the movie drags in some areas. Like, it is boring and it drags. And it also suffers from the fact that you have to introduce eight characters and make them all likable enough, because they're all the main protagonists in a sense, and to have the movie around them. And look, I know... People who say, oh, but you don't need to have previous movies to do a team-up movie or to do a team movie. X-Men did it. But look, remember how X-Men was basically just Wolverine and his sidekicks. No, Wolverine and his backup dancers. Like, very few characters actually got good character development in the X-Men. Look, I liked the original X-Men, Jean Grey movie, the, the original X-Men and the Jean Grey who was in it, but she was underdeveloped. Scott was underdeveloped. Storm was underdeveloped. You could see it in those movies. They had a lot of characters for that team, but very few of them actually got good development. And here they really tried. They really tried, and I will give them that. Even though some of them are killed off. How do you kill my boy, Gilgamesh, like that? I wanted to see him team up with Wong, for Christ's sake, Marvel. Why you do me like that? So yeah, they suffer from this, and you can say, oh, but Justice League did it. Yeah, Justice League did it, but Zack Snyder needed three hours 
Was it three hours? I think it was three hours. I mean, maybe I need to receive the Snyder Cut, but I think it was three hours. Three hours of a movie just to get me to care for the new Justice League characters. And most of that three hours was wasted on that woman singing as Aquaman went into the water. But anyway, apart from that, yeah, the movie suffers from that and it drags in some areas. It gets really, really boring. And yeah, that's the thing that Eternals will be divisive over for a lot of people who are just watching it is the boring parts are very, very boring. I would rate it above Thor the Dark World boring, but there is that boring. And also, why do you have to turn Icarus into the bad guy? Like when I heard the leaks, I didn't believe them. But then I watched it, and why? Why do I turn him into the bad guy? Why is it that the Superman character has to be doing the bad guy? Look, modern comic companies. You're not being subversive if you turn the Superman guy into the bad guy. Every mother, every person has done it at this point. It's not interesting anymore. Oh, the Superman guy is the bad guy. Oh, come on. Come on, he's having me rolling my eyes here. Yeah, so yeah, and they, you know, they kill, like I said, kill Gilgamesh. Why do you kill it? So, in terms of what I think about Marvel's Eternals, I think it's a unique movie from the rest of the MCU and that helps it stand out. But uniqueness doesn't mean good. And unfortunately, it has some areas where it just drags and it is boring. And like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry it has some areas where it's boring. But it also has some areas where it's fun. Like, the characters are fun. The action set pieces are decent enough. And the cinematography is good enough. The shots on site are just... Mm, they remind me of the better Marvel movies, not the CGI fests. And look, I enjoy the CGI fests. I enjoyed the final battle in Endgame, even though it looked like it came straight out of a AAA video game. But hey, that's just me. And maybe... Maybe Eternals can make a sequel and they can focus on their mistakes and fix them there. Because they have something going for them. This whole Eternal storyline, they have something going for them. I suspect that the Celestials will be the threat of Phase 4. Because that is where the Shang-Chi rings might come from. But hey, that's just me spitballing here. Or theorizing. And I'm not a theory channel. Maybe if you want me to be a theory channel, you can tell me. But those are my thoughts. A competently made movie that's unique. Stands out from the rest of the pack. Uh, but it has, it drags, and it also suffers from having too big a cast. Also, like I said, the uniqueness of this movie, it really feels more like it's its own, its own franchise. Like, if you didn't set this in the MCU and you just made it, I, if you didn't tell me that this was set in the MCU, I wouldn't believe it. Well, I would believe it because they mentioned the Avengers and Captain America. But yeah, so my thoughts, like I said, Eternals is a decent movie. It's not great, it's not horrible, it's not Thor the Dark World horrible, but it's decent enough. And I think that's more, that's all I can ask for it, but I hope in future the sequels, they actually work on them to fix some of the mistakes. And yeah, maybe it might be a chance for us to see unique type movies in the MCU. I don't mean those super artsy, feely stuff, but hey, I'm okay with it. So yeah, this has been Red Chaos 1, and this is just my thoughts on Eternals. I very much recommend you see Eternals, because this movie is an experience. You, I think different people come out of it feeling different ways, and I know many of the critics went, oh, this is great, this is amazing. Because, you know, the artsy feely stuff. But I think it's decent enough for you to watch. It isn't that much worse than a Thor The Dark World or an Iron Man 3. So, yeah, just tell me what you... you if you've watched it, you can tell me what you thought about it in the, in the comment section. This has been Red Chaos 1, signing off.